German artist Hendrik Beikirk, known by his alias ECB, creates portraits of richly storied anonymous subjects that fascinate through their sheer force of personality. The scale of his works and the subject of his portraits invite onlookers to consider the relationship between individual and society, viewer and subject. At Lothi Colony, he paints the portrait of an old lady. I think if you paint portraits of uh, unknown people, the most beautiful or magical part is how to find them. I think it's not that you would find them, I guess it's more they would find you. And uh, the first day I was checking out the area and we kind of ran into her and we kind of found her, or let's say she found us, and we, we got a chat and then I was fascinated by the fact that kind of the, the restaurant or the street food joint she runs is so different from uh, restaurants and food places you would find in Europe. So I think it's kind of special and it's also, uh, I guess it's a hard work as well. But she was really nice, she was really like uh, happy doing her work, uh, serving her customers. That's why I found it would be like a perfect uh, opportunity to paint her mural to kind of make her a little larger than life. Lavanya and paints the word in the Devnagiri font, attempting to immortalize the strength and beauty of his subject through this portrait. Sidewalk stardom for an anonymous woman. I think by adding a quote or even like a single word, you can create like an extra world of, of pictures and imaginations. And I found like that she was like particular beautiful and like that's why I tried to find the right word for grace in English and uh, it was a little tricky from what the, the others said because there's not like an exact uh, translation but I like the fact that this also can be a girl's or like a woman's name but it also can be like the, the term of grace in the sense of beauty, dignity and pride. But ultimately she is someone we might not notice and Hendrik notes that by painting the wall gray and the portrait black, a nod to how we disappear into crowds. I think it's on a wall like this, you have to obey two different uh, facts. First of all, the wall itself has like a really uh, particular structure due to the windows and the arch. That's why I wanted to have her looking to the left hand side, kind of the open side of the wall. And this also relates to the content because I wanted to have her like uh, looking in the, in the future, but also like reflecting on the past. Every ordinary person has an extraordinary journey and Hendrik's piece depicts just that. It's not, it's not really immortal because in public space everything is uh, kind of uh, similar to life, it changes, uh, this wall gets a lot of traffic, a lot of dust, so it's, uh, it's the attempt to make it immortal because I think uh, life kind of is short and everyone has like his own dreams and plans and sometimes you wouldn't be able to kind of uh, fulfill them, but I guess in the end it's just about that you keep trying. Based artist Daku is everywhere, yet no one knows him. He has been making works in anonymity, offering political commentary through his art, which are a ubiquitous sight around Delhi. At Lothi Colony, 
Daku creates an installation that transcends the boundaries of what street art is capable of. Playing with shadows and the notion of time, his wall is an expression of life itself, a living work that is not just graffiti. The idea behind this wall is to do with time and basic idea about how time changes everything. All the words written here are the things which changes with time. When I started this wall, I thought, of, thought a lot about uh, what kind of work it should be. I've been researching poems on time, on seasons, quotes and words and different, different things. But the, the structure of wall is, is such that uh, it has like breaks in between, it has like windows, it has this, this arch in between. So there's no continuity. After like coming back to this wall again and again, I also figured the how shadow is falling on the wall. Because every time I came, I saw a different angle of the shadow. How you can understand this, uh, the sun path and how shadows will fall on this wall. When I learned about shadow falling pattern on this wall, I was, I was kind of pretty sure that I want to work with shadow because shadow is also a medium to work and instead of using color or any other material, I'm, I'm just using light and, and shadow to, to play with. That's how uh, this, this whole, whole wall uh, came up. are the words which changes with time. So whether it's like, it's attitude or perception or people or obesity or reality or like, you know, anything. It like it's, whether it's human emotion or, or people or life or aim, in life it changes with time. And that's what this wall also does. Because everything on this wall is, is constantly changing, even like, as we are talking, it's it's changing, but it's changing at a very slow speed that we're not realizing it. But it's constant change, and that's what I kind of like about it because I also want like people who's passing by to maybe if you pass by a few times, you try and understand what this wall is. It's it's kind of a puzzle that why these words. Maybe you realize uh, you know, after some time that it is something to do with time, and it changes with time. Daku's creation takes birth and dies every day. Inspired by the ancient Egyptian sundials, the installation comes alive between 9 in the morning to 4 in the evening every day except from mid-May to mid-August, when the rays of the sun fail to cast a shadow on the wall. Another thing which I kept in mind about is not having words which are too heavy, the words which are easy and even common people can understand. More importantly, you have to see it, you have to experience it. There's no point talking about it. Returning to his practice of giving voice to common people's opinion and disgust through his artworks, Daku's piece at Inland Container Depot is next to one of the biggest landfills in Delhi. He creates a composition that is simplistic yet powerful. Daku paints the word breathe using an ink created from industrial toxic waste, asking the viewer to breathe in the air of the most polluted city in the world. I love the 
white water saying breathe. It, it's so, so plas uh, plastic, but it's very, very powerful. It's minimal and, you know, just a personal thing. The ink was made out of like pollution, especially in Delhi, it's quite apt. So yeah, I really like breathe and also the, the spacing of the letters and how it's so like, the piece itself is so non-polluted, but actually the material used is kind of made out of pollution. It kind of, I think the space that he's chosen is, is beautiful and kind of stops you and makes you just calm down for a minute of those, those letters and that work. What I liked about Daku is uh, the ink that has been used is taken from the industrial waste. So this way you're giving a kind of a, uh, you know, a, maybe a note to the world that uh, you just have uh, something for the industrial concern as well. And the place, obviously, the containers that give you the feeling of the industrial thing. He has taken the something out of the industrial waste, the toxic kala ink he has made. Hendrik painted Asia's tallest mural in South Korea. Here at ICD, he takes on a similar challenge. His canvas is a 120-foot giant silo next to the beastly Tobakabad landfill. He now paints a monumental portrait of an anonymous man titled There is Nowhere to Go But Everywhere, finishing a story he started two years ago in Delhi. Concept-wise, it's kind of related to the mural of Mahatma Gandhi I did two years ago. Because when Star Daily approached me uh, with the idea and the photo of this location, I thought it would be really interesting since I painted one of the most iconic Indian portraits, to do a portrait of someone totally unknown, in kind of uh, creating a nice contrast and then kind of uh, telling the complete story. For me, it's kind of like a circle, having on one side the, the, one of the most iconic Indian persons from like history at all, painted on the uh, ITO crossing right on the uh, Delhi police headquarters. So this is like a nice kind of inner city, like a special thing for the police and, and, and the building itself. And on the other side, this one, it's kind of located in an area where we, you would never expect art. And probably most of the people working out here seldom go to like the openings or museums. So this is why to me it kind of tells the whole story. You got like the the more like related to the the art and the museum kind of concept Gandhi in the inner city areas and this portrait of the unknown uh, man in this kind of complete industrial area. In the execution of the, the painting, I would say it's totally handmade because it's kind of freestyle without the use of a projector or something like this. On the technical aspect, this would be probably the most challenging part of this one because a round shape always creates some sort of distortion on the side. Hendrik is inspired by the surroundings that, to him, symbolize the development of our cities at the hands of the ordinary citizens who are ultimately neglected. It's, it's not a portrait of someone who's directly working over here, but it's a portrait of someone who's kind of working in this whole uh, concept of garbage collecting the landfill. So I think it do tells a story also in relation to the landfill, but I more see it as a, like a symbol for all the people working out here. Because it's a, it's a pure industrial space and for the individual it's kind of maybe tough to work in here. So if this could uh, serve as like a, a symbol, that would be uh, the best for me. 
one thing that is making this art form interesting because the people around here, they could witness the way the piece was done. Compared once again to a museum or a gallery, you just see the final artwork. So I think this do helps that you can relate to the artwork a little better because you have seen the way it kind of uh, was put up. And then I think it's um, the interesting part is that no one really knows who he is. So this might lead to interesting questions about society in, in general. So because of someone really unknown kind of being painted larger than life, to me it's just like a statement as well. Hendrik's fascination with old faces reflects the anonymity and transience of the contemporary urban experience. It's for a different reason that I would favor to paint old faces. First of all, on a like uh, painterly approach, it's a little easier to paint wrinkles. So that's kind of the, the easy way out. But then the main reason content-wise would be that for the viewer, I think an older face just tells a, a better or like a richer story. Because from all the stuff you experience uh, during your life, it's kind of written in your face. And this is what I, I'm trying to portray. I think if you want to capture like the aura or like the inside of a person, this works best, at least for myself. And if you use color, color always can kind of distract. And as you said, it's kind of difficult to say what nationality this person would be. So I think the, the black and white really breaks it down to the individual and self and to take away this whole kind of aspect of uh, what race it would be, like where it would come from. उनकी तस्वीर है नेपाल के जो कौन है वो खाद मैं इतने जानता हूँ नेपाल के हैं जैसा लग रहा है कि स्टेडी के साइन क्या फोटो है सर के ऊपर पट्टी बनाया हुआ है गाड़ी उड़ी है मुझे चाहे ये स्टेडी के साइन का वैसा ही फोटो इतना बात चित्र जो है आप पहली बार देख रहे हैं मैंने बनाते हैं At the end of the day, we are all humans, first of all. And then another also interesting feature is that a lot of people might go like, he looks like the friend of my grandfather. So we kind of, we do think we are all so special, but at the end of the day, we are kind of similar.